The year is 1975. A brooding, beaten, and busted up George Foreman is recovering from the infamous rumble in the jungle, which saw him humiliated and taunted by the likes of Muhammad Ali in one of the greatest bouts in heavyweight history. I kept telling him he had no punch, he couldn't hit, he's swinging like a sissy, he's missing, let me see your box. I hadn't started dancing yet. Wanting to build his reputation as a killing machine and needing a few rounds in the ring after losing some of his killer physique, Foreman had the bizarre yet hopefully lucrative idea to bash up five pro boxers in one night. With Ali on the commentary, a hostile crowd, and a temper from George that could make Bruce Banner back down from a fight, it was destined that this night of boxing would be remembered for years to come. Welcome back to Boxing After Dark. Tonight, we're delving through the depths of a broken man's physique and witnessing a night that was criticized in its time yet has lived on as a classic oddity in boxing, like De La Hoya's bout with Shaquille O'Neal or Tommy Morrison's war with a random fighter from the crowd after his opponent refused to fight. Hello, everybody from Dream. I love you, Mom and Dad and everybody here. Eh? But a statement that showed just how terrifying Foreman could be when motivated to prove himself. Let's get into it. So why is George looking so full of vitriol in a time like this? The man was just recently the most feared human in all of sports, with a devastating KO ratio that outmatched even the great artist Sonny Liston before him. Not only could I hurt you for those few rounds, two or three rounds of my previous career, I could really do damage to you your body physically, your brain. Well, just like every other great heavyweight of his time, Foreman had to deal with Ali. No matter who you are, an athlete, a religious person, or even a therapist, there is no escaping the torment of Muhammad if he set his sights on you. You, George Foreman, all of you chumps are gonna bow when I whoop him. All of you, I know you got him. I know you got him, Dick, but the man's in trouble. I'm gonna show you how great I am. After dealing with the world premiere of the infamous rope dope which led to Foreman's first professional loss, depression would be putting how Big George felt lightly. I felt like I lost everything, not just the championship of the world, but I lost myself as a man. But now was his redemption. There was more fish in the sea for Foreman. He could beat many other competitors and get a title once again. It was just about staying active and motivated. And what better way to do that than to sell out a stadium while knocking out five massive men of substantial talent? But who exactly were they? Well, first was Alonzo Johnson, a former victim of a very young Muhammad Ali and three years out of the professional ring by this time. Next up was Jerry Judge, a great power yet glass-chinned opponent who had knocked out the solid contender Chuck Wepner and became a solid early victory for a future dominant champ by the name of Larry Holmes. Third came Terry Daniels, a man with scant good wins, but a resume that included decent bouts with a prime Joe Frazier, an old yet still dangerous Cleveland Williams. Fourth was Charlie Polite, who'd already been an unfortunate victim of a younger George Foreman, along with Ernie Shavers, Jerry Cooney, and Floyd Patterson. Finally comes the greatest of the five fighters, Boone Kirkman. Whether Foreman planned it or not, he saved the greatest of his five fighters until last, when he'd be most fatigued. Admittedly, Foreman had already beaten Kerman professionally six years ago. Still, since then, Boone had defeated the former heavyweight champion Jimmy Ellis in a great war that ended in a split decision. The night arrived on the 26th of April in 1975, and as the event began, Foreman looked on at a Muhammad Ali-infested crowd and vowed to create an unforgettable night. Alonzo Johnson, the first fighter of the five, steps into the ring with the scariest man walking, and the battle begins. That don't work. The bell for round one, quickly to ring center. This is first round action. George, George is doing a lot of dancing, which is not his style. He's moving, I think he's trying to impress me that he can move, but I don't dance that much now. I lay on the rope, so he's dancing for nothing. Be surprised now, Lonzo Johnson much better than he looks. He might say he can knock his man out, but he is, uh, he's uh, clowning and joking, but it's not as easy. When the man is weighing 230 something pounds, he's not in the top condition. So you gotta make a show out of it. You can't really go out there and do your best. So he's doing things now that he wouldn't do in a real fight. Come up, come up. George Foreman at the end of the first Come round. up, that's it, that's, that's it, that's it, that's it. Come up, that's it, that's it. Get on the ropes, get on the ropes, come up. He'll get tired, he'll get tired. Come up, come up, come up. Come up, come up. 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 Come up.
Leon Rhodes. He's down again. Leon Rhodes. Referee Rhodes. Harry Davis. On the ropes. Allows the fight to continue. Cover. On the ropes. Hold on. Cover. There he goes, down again. After a slow recovery, Johnson found himself back on the canvas soon after, and the first of five had officially been taken down. The opponent you're looking at now is Jerry Judge. Foreman has indicated he'll knock Judge out in the first round. Judge is 26. First round action, second of Foreman against five. Jerry Judge, the opponent, in the blue trunks. Foreman in the red. I know he's moving, he's got reach, he's getting in and out. Fullman ain't done, I haven't done nothing yet. That was when Dallas crushed by, oh, good left gotten in by Terry Daniels. Terry Daniels. I mean, J Jerry Judge, forgive me. Jerry Judge in the blue trunks. Now Foreman's getting to the kid. There it went, from that right, Jerry Judge went down. is talking to Ali. This is a tough, gutsy kid, as I said. The bell for round one. George is getting mad. Look at him walking around, looking at the fans who are booing him. And by the time he meets the fifth man, who is the best, we can see that this is going to be really rough. Now, if George is in with the same man, he'll be tiring the man out. He's having a difficult time, Howard, and I want you to tell the people the truth. It's not as easy as we thought it would be for George. He has absolutely nothing to gain and everything to lose. Plus, Howard, I'm watching him. Today. I'm spying on him. Now, he got into Judge there and hurt him. Two, Referee Harry Number Davis two, has stopped the fight. Second round, it ended. What is happening there? Foreman is not himself. He's going after the kid again. Needlessly, for no reason, he's beaten him. This is an absurd scene. Soon after the bout is called off, anger erupts from the two men in the middle, and George and Jerry Judge begin trading blows. After the heat cools and George Foreman throws a can at Muhammad Ali's head, the third fight of the night is lined up. And the two wrestled to the canvas. It was a scene that was hard to believe. Terry Daniels landing with a quick left. Terry Daniels in the white trunks as this fight starts. Hard to believe, isn't it? There was a good right by Foreman. Somehow get a grip on himself, a powerhouse right to Daniel. The third opponent for George Funk. Alonzo Johnson out and two, Jerry Judge out and two. Dempsey, oh, there it was in the first round, down from a quick left. Coming back to the action as Daniels gets up after the eight count. Foreman again with two good lefts. Another good left. Good right. He's getting ready to put Terry away. As he'll get all he wants when he meets me. He'll get all he wants. He can whoop these five men, but he won't whoop no one me. And for those of you who have been with us from the beginning, an utterly weird afternoon. I've called it a carnival, a charade, whatever you want to say about it. Some weird behavior, too, by George Foreman, agitated by Muhammad Ali, who's next no, to me no, at ringside. As I said, a bizarre occasion, but not without pressing. Terry Daniels is hurt. The superior weight and strength just pushed him back against the ropes there. Oh, what a left by George Foreman. 232 pound Foreman. You see him staggering, he's ready to go. It's a game kid, but he's ready to go. Oh, that left. Now he's got him pinned he's against the ropes. ropes. He might go, though. He still might go. But if he can just cover up and use that rope tactic. He's blasting now. George is tired, too. George has got two more fresh men waiting for him now. Remember that. Foreman just told the referee to stop it. And the referee has stopped it, and the crowd disappeared. Foreman stops the fight controversially, causing a scrap after the bout has ended for the second time of the night. They've started fighting again. The referee off in the corner with the handler. I told you this is the weirdest occasion you'll ever want to see. The referee's fighting George now. The trainer's fighting there. You just wait until I get in there. I'll straighten it all out. Now there's going to be a fight between the trainers. 
Now there's nothing but hey, man, you can't get bedlam, it. mayhem in the ring. The thing totally out of control. Barry Daniels being cheered by the crowd. We're coming up to our fourth bout. Charlie Polite is the man you're looking at. The fourth opponent. The bell for round one. Coming up next, Boone Kirkman. By that time, we may really see a fight. Charlie Polite showing a little movement. George, what is that? Charlie Polite's going to look like he's pretty good. He's determined. What is this new bouncing technique of performance? Well, I really don't know. I think he's trying to throw me off. You know I'm watching him. Play the ropes! Good left by George with Ali in the background serving as manager, play the trainer, ropes. whatever of the Time five out, opponents. Time out, play the ropes! It's a slow-paced round. David Ruffin will whoop both of With wild punches there. And Foreman is tired. You can see it. It's round number two. Do what Foreman I tell you, Charlie. I'm the expert. Charlie Polite, the Black Trunks. This is the fourth opponent. Hit the rope. He ain't going to do nothing. He won't do nothing. Just lay on the ropes. Woo! Woo! Charlie. Woo! B, hit the rope. Foreman's That's it. Make it work. To pull him That's it. Hit the ropes. ropes. Make it work. Make it work. Hit the ropes. Make it work. Hit the ropes. Make it work. Hit the rope. Make it work. Make it work. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Foreman there held go. Polite's left glove and kept rope. striking away at him with the right. He's doing my style now. Hit the rope. You're letting the judge run himself out. All you got to do is hit the ropes and tie up. There you go. He's playing the smart now. Come up. Ali says. Come up. Charlie. Come up. Now Come up. Foreman right above us. Laying it into the light against the ropes. I take There you go. Look at that. That's hardly professional, is it? He's smart. He's taking my style. Oh, he's got George Vaughn. We might see upset tonight. One there you go. There you go. More than ever. Come no on, man. Hit them ropes. Hit them ropes. Hit the ropes on him. He gave a half. Charlie Polite just gave a half. Ali shuffle. Polite got in a good right to Foreman's midsection. Muhammad, more than ever, I have to wonder why Foreman went into this thing. It's Polite. This certainly won't do much to build up Foreman's hopes for a rematch against Ali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Hit the rope. Hit the Isn't rope. That absurd. Ali yelling in the background. Hit the ropes and then. The attempt set up at and Polite coming back at form. Come out. There you go. Play the rope. There you go. There is simply no shutting Muhammad Ali up at this point. Play the rope. He is so delighted to see Polite using the rope. George's legs are wobbly throughout, but he cruises to the final bell after showboating and landing some venomous strikes in the second and barreling Polite to the canvas in the third. Out of shape, he's overweight, and he's not doing that bad. The final fight is the most epic making of the bouts. While Foreman looks like he's about to collapse going into it, Boone Kirkman finds an animal inside Big George that many agree was never seen again. George Foreman just leaned over and said to us, I'm tired, man. And yet he begins with Come up, brightly Boone. foot moves. Play the ropes, brightly Boone. for George. Play the ropes, Boone. Play the ropes, and immediately Boone. Ali goes into his play the ropes boom chant. Be like I'm gonna beat Habu Costello. An obviously troubled on, young man who Keep has lost on, his Boone. confidence in the wake of this loss to Ali last October in Zaire. A charade. There you go, George. Oh, a good right by Foreman then though. Tell everybody there in the land no fraud, I'm going to give him my get go, right now, I'll be there. there. And you heard the champion. He's got his own exhibition in Orlando. There you go, George. Kirk, Take Boone it back, George. Kirkman went through the ropes. He's in desperate trouble. The left floored him. Boone Kirkman, who is a promotion of the late Jack Hurley. A personal promotion. Jack Hurley could sell anybody anything. Foreman in the red trunks, Kirkman in the white. Let me reset this weird 
series of events this afternoon. Stopped in the second. Jerry Judge stopped in the second. And over Kenny Norton in Caracas, Venezuela, even though he decked Kirkman in the first round. In George Foreman's boxing career. A good left by Boone Kirkman that hurt George Foreman. That he was before he fought Muhammad Ali. That seems a fair presumption under the circumstances. And now into the 12th round with Boone Kirkman. A weary George Foreman to salvage something. Oh, a good right lead by Kirkman. To salvage something out of the day, Foreman would like to put this man away. You can understand this. Foreman were in his 30s, but he's still a kid. Now he's desperate. He's pouring leather. He's got Kirkman staggering all over the place and holding on. As you Kirkman again got a good right lead on George. As the fight winds down to its end, you will hardly memorialize the events here at Maple Leaf Gardens today. After making it to the final bell, Foreman succeeded in surviving a night against five professional boxers and landing knockdowns in each while knocking out three. You can't fight and lay on no rope. What's wrong with these men? The only reason the guy went three rounds, he laid on the rope. I'm going to fight, I'm going to beat every, every heavyweight in the world, then I'm going to retire, go home and kiss my little daughter and get away from boxing. Foreman and Ali's rivalry over the years was magnificent, from trolling to friendship to brotherhood. This night showcased the worst and best of both men, the anger from George and the persistent insults from Ali, as well as Foreman's courage and will and Ali's lovable nature. Boy, how much tricked me out of my title. Uh, he laid on the rope. And I, like a dope, kept throwing punches. When I got out of there, he knocked me out. In front of the whole world. I'll never forget that. <laughs> oh, Hamlet, why did you do that to me? Both men grew over time. And while Foreman has become one of the most likable boxers of all time, Ali left the earth as one of the greatest humans. While boxing is a sport often seen as brutal or dogmatic, this story shows the love and humanity it can bring to the humans who frequently need it more than anyone else.